what is the relation between diet and lifestyle and Alzheimer's disease? And why is the age of Alzheimer's occurring at younger and younger ages? Well, right now it's pretty well accepted in the scientific literature that the major risk factors for heart disease are also the same major risk factors for dementia and Al for all types of dementia, but particularly Alzheimer's disease. So we're talking about if you eat a diet that increases your risk of having a heart attack and you don't have a heart attack, you're, you're losing mental function and you're, getting, and you're promoting Alzheimer's. But all Americans are losing intelligence as they age, which is not natural. In other words, they're losing for multiple reasons. Their, their circulation is being impa impaired. And circular lack of blood flow to the brain decreases your intelligence. And they're exposing themselves to spikes of glucose <coughs> and insulin from the high sugar diet and the high spikes of insulin destroys brain cells and weakens the brain and predisposes you to depression and mental illness as well. And, the, and of course, the high cholesterol and the inflammation, the oxidized LDL and the exposure to toxins, all these, there's all the factors that um, dis slowly destroy your health, destroy the brain simultaneously. Even more so because the brain doesn't produce its own antioxidants like muscle tissue can. The brain requires a continual supply of phytochemicals to defend itself from your stresses of your life. And it requires rest. And, and so the, uh, we put tremendous stress on our brain and it's no wonder that people don't even get demented even earlier. And it's no wonder that we're seeing it at an earlier age and we're seeing earlier age of strokes and we're seeing earlier age of memory loss and, la and intelligence and lack of concentration, people having to retire early. And if you want to get into a good money-making business, you can open up a nursing home for people who've had strokes between the ages of 40 and 65 that don't go into the regular nursing homes because we have more and more people having strokes at younger ages too. Uh, to, to make a point on this, in my book Longevity I wrote about 20 years ago, uh, at that point the, the top man in the world doing research on brain degradation was up at Harvard. And what was stunning to me is one of the first genes, probably the first gene that was established is this is what you look like when you have Alzheimer's or dementia. Uh, he was seeing centurions, 100-year-old people, that literally didn't have dementia and had that classic gene. But what did he do? He noted that these people were social, reading every single day, that they were using their brain with crossword puzzles. There was a wide variety of things. So diet is a part of this equation, but not the whole thing. Uh, today I joked about it in my, my uh, talk with you. When people are recluse, they have more dementia. When people lose a, a wife or lose a husband, they may have been lucid, fantastic, out doing a job, lose a husband. Within a year, they have signs of memory loss, dementia, and Alzheimer's. And what's scary is that my generation, the baby boom generation, they estimate that 25% of us are going to have this. Do you know how many millions of people globally we're talking about? And if my generation is going to have it, God forbid, what's the children going to have who are eating these horrible foods? And by the way, using computers which lower IQ. Now we're clear on that. Computer use on a regular basis lowers IQ. It doesn't increase your intelligence. Well, I just want to say one quick thing. I don't necessarily, you know, I don't necessarily think that those are major factors compared to the dietary exactly. factors, number one. But number two, think about this for a minute. If you eat the way other Americans eat, then you placing your loved ones and your family with the responsibility of caring for you in your later years when you become <coughs> demented and sick. It's not fair to other people. It's not fair to put your, to have other people have to care for you and, run and ruin their life and stress out their life because you abused your body with food. Take great care of your health because you take care of yourselves, but you're also doing the best for your family and your loved one because you can, are being self-sufficient and send caring for yourself and not become a burden on them in your later years. So one of our guests, uh, yeah. One of our guests uh, got a call from home and uh, her mom said, dad was just diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And she said, what can we do? What, uh, it, you know, what can I send to them? And what can I say? And, uh, you know, I said, you know, I call that diabetes type 3 because it's actually the hippocampus that makes insulin to take care of the, the glucose uh, frequency, the energy of uh, glucose in your brain. And when that goes down, you have a big problem. And she said, it was funny because my dad has diabetes type 2. And so, so what we did, we made a schedule between, of course, vitamin D, omega-3, B12, 
we have a product called Conscious Brain that really gets going. And even our son who's in college says like, send me Conscious Brain. And uh, two weeks later, he was sitting doing um, crosswords. So, you know, they, they could see the difference. And so you never take no for an answer. And, you know, it has to do with the proteins that you're ingesting that actually spikes your insulin much more than all the sugars. And so remember that it's the animal-based foods that is the biggest culprit of this. And uh, not being active, not being social, and, you know, all of the things that we've talked about is a big, big part. But, you know, your brain makes insulin. You actually take care of that part in the brain by itself. And um, your pancreas takes care of the rest of the body. So it's very important that we have a balance between the sugars. You know, glucose is the energy source of all the foods, in all the foods. When we, for example, drink our green drink, 90% is carbohydrates. There's carbohydrates, carbohydrates. There is pasta carbohydrates, or there is green drink carbohydrates that turns to simple sugars. So your body's getting all the glucose that it's need. And a lot of people come to our institute with blood sugar problem, diabetes, of course. Diabetes type one, type two. A lot of people are on metformin, they're on insulin, and they have to lower. One guy was just coming in three weeks ago. He came with 60 units. He went down to seven units in three weeks. He lost 30 pounds. His cholesterol dropped 120 pounds. It's a no-brainer. But of course, it's very good if you do it under uh, supervision, um, you know, like at the institute or with Dr. F uh, Joel and, you know, with people that actually knows how to uh, get you there. But there's a lot of I information in our books and everybody's books here that really can help you too. Of interest, I just think it's on the similar subjects. What you're bringing up is that, number one, the type 2 diabetics can, the vast majority, over 90%, can become non-diabetic in a short period of time, which is absolutely essential. And the type 1 diabetics, who still require insulin, can reduce their insulin needs by two-thirds. And it's the excess insulin they take that causes them to get leg amputations and blindness and kidney failure and, fi and heart attacks at the age before the age of 60. And dementia. And dementia <laughs> and depression, of course. They become depressed. So it's this excess insulin that's shortened your lifespan. So a type 1 diabetes, diabetic doesn't have to have a shortened lifespan with high morbidity and mortality if they eat a healthy diet. They require very little insulin and they don't get the highs and lows. Furthermore, I've been lucky enough to care for people with newly diagnosed type 1 diabetics in their childhood and I have reversal I have numerous children who came to me early on when they were first diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and they no longer have type 1 diabetes because they caught it, we exactly. caught it early enough. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, putting, I'm putting that out shortly in a medical research a case study list of all the children who have gotten rid of their type 1 diabetes oh, completely. Showing with the blood test, the islet cell antibodies and all the, to show them that they reversed it completely. And I waited for two years and years to get the make the collection to make sure I followed them to enough years to make sure they were totally gone from having type 1 so diabetes. You, you, you have know. enough that you should do a book on that because that's the one thing that nobody touches. Yeah. Well, I do have a, I did mention some of that in, the, in my book, The End of Diabetes, but not, it's mostly about type 2. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah. yeah. And, a, and a big, uh, big reason. Uh, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt, but can you imagine if everyone in the, all the doctors in the country, whenever they got a, di a type 1 diabetes kid, diagnosed, rapidly put them on a healthy diet yeah, and see what percent that. of yeah. these people could change from developing type 1. Mm -hmm. This is something nobody's even thinking about. I know, not yeah, even could, thinking. Uh, they don't touch it. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, a German study about 40 years ago already uh, got onto the gluten and they found that if you have diabetes 1 or 2, you are absolutely gluten, gluten allergic. You shouldn't even come near gluten. So that was a big, big factor. Um, I just wanted to share an experience I had. I was at, in Lithuania uh, teaching at the medical school and speaking at their annual lifetime, lifestyle medicine conference. And I met a young man who was about 21 years of age. And uh, he had an experience where he was uh, diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at 15 years of age and was in intensive care. And his mom, uh, you know, completely uh, uh, freaked out that he was all of a sudden type 1 diabetic. And she, you, I'm okay. sure you, you, yeah. And, and uh, sh she started him on a, a raw food diet right away, right as he was in the hospital. And he, uh, when I met him, he was 21. 
he completely reversed yeah. his, his uh, diabetes and he's still six years later uh, completely diabetes free and still on the raw food diet. So this is like Dr. Furman was saying too, um, this is not something that is on the radar at all of mainstream medicine. No. So I think it's Even alternative medicine. Yeah, even alternative <laughs> medicine, even alternative. it's true. We, you know, the, 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 the sort of the old thinking is that once beta cells are destroyed, uh, they're dead, they're dead, that's it. Whereas I think there's a possibility, and you would be able, that, that during the first few weeks, they're actually sleeping <laughs> and, and hibernating. And, and that if, if you uh, reduce the inflammation and so on, and, and get the immune system working properly, that you, you can actually bring them back. There's a, I don't know if you'd call it a, a you know, sort of honeymoon period or whatever. Yeah, and I track the numbers of the um, antibody and the antibodies against the pancreas beta cells, and show that the antibodies over time slowly go down. You know, and I've tracked them for years, and to see that they're still elevated, but they're going down and down and down, and they're and so the pancreas is recovering, and the activity of the autoimmune attack on the pancreas is slowly diminishing. Well, uh, what know. we should do, you, you and the institute, all of us, all yeah. four of us sitting, we should do a study. Yeah. We should put out a message worldwide and basically ask for new Di diagnosed type, type 1 diabetes and yeah. run 30, 40 of them. I'd be more than happy to house them at the institute and That'd do the work. All right. it's, it's, it would be really important to do this. All right, let's, work on, let's work, talk about that more. It would be great to do that. Okay.